Hello once again guys, you're watching High Voltage Mayhem and today I have a bit of a video for you concerning FPV equipment. Yes, FPV, we all love flying around our aircraft with a first person view camera and a little transmitter. It's a lot of fun, but here are a few tips you may need to know and we're going to do a bench test of this powerful transmitter. Um, what I'm trying to achieve is the maximum range of FPV system, but there's a very delicate balance between which antenna you should use and how much power you should use. And of course there are other factors like uh, camera quality and things like that in the quality of your receiver. So uh, today I wanted to review the 2 watt transmitter. Indeed this is a 2000 milliwatt FPV transmitter. As you can see it, uh, this part here and this is the transmitter. So we have our coax out right here, SMA. And we also have our antenna here. Now there's the output. Now this transmitter being as powerful as it is. Uh, can distort if you're at close range and it depends on the type of antenna you use whether you get a good crisp video signal or not so what I'd like to discuss about this is what type of antenna you should use and we'll give this unit a bench test here in just a minute before we mount it on our aircraft so I want to start off by saying this unit operates on uh, 12 volts now in the instructions you will read that this thing runs from 9 volts you know up but in reality, this transmitter will not run on 9 volts. Don't try it. If you run it on 9 volts, you'll get very poor signal and you'll get um, distortion. You'll get all kinds of you know black and white and just no telling what. So it is best to run this on 12 volts. So if you have a LiPo that's 12 volts, you can just solder it in right here or just plug it in. This unit came plug and play pretty much ready to go. So that's how we, how we do that. Now, as far as antennas are concerned, the best antenna for your money right here is a left-hand polarized omnidirectional antenna. You know, some people love the little dipoles, but they're junk. They're junk, people. And here's why. The, a dipole antenna is usually linearly polarized, so it'll be polarized linearly, and that can cause some issues if, uh, if you're flying at an angle. So let's just, uh, let me get a screwdriver or drill bit or just something and I can explain what the, uh, what the deal is with those. Okay, so, ugh, junk, sorry. So, say this is your uh, antenna right here. If this is your antenna and it's facing upright and you have your receiver antenna, which is here, as you can see the bandwidth is quite nice and the uh, signal will travel from one antenna to another without distortion. However, if you turn the aircraft sideways, notice that this area right here, that's the amount of signal that you will receive on your receiver. However, if the aircraft is facing this way, which is level flight, you'll get good reception. However, the minute you make a turn, as you can see, uh, you only have just a little bit of a signal coming in on your receiver. That's the way these dipoles work. So. Um, to avoid that problem, you can use what they call an omnidirectional antenna. So instead of sending out the signal linearly, you actually send out the signal in sort of a bubble, all directions. So this antenna will come in really handy if you're flying uh, at, at an angle, or you're flying sideways, or you're making a, a sharp turn, or even upside down, this antenna will still pick up uh, really well, and there will be very little video breakup. Now I forgot to mention, uh, this unit here does operate on 5.8 gigahertz. This is the 5.8 gigahertz range, and there are little dip switches on here somewhere. There you are, you can set the frequency, so if you have an AV receiver that's 5.8 gig, you can set it and tune it in, or you can tune your receiver one way or another. So if you're having multiple channels using, you can uh, just set that and you'll be pretty much good to go. Now, one thing you do want to watch out for is this transmitter is heavy. I mean, compared to weight of an FPV transmitter, this weighs a lot. I mean, look at it. It's got a big aluminum heat sink on there and a fan because the thing gets so hot, you know. So it, uh, this transmitter puts off a ton of power. It's, it's a 2,000 milliwatt transmitter, so it's going to come with some drawbacks. It's going to come drawback number one, power consumption. It's going to use a whole lot of power. And uh, second of all, it's very heavy, and it gets very hot. So if you want to hot glue it down in there, it'll probably peel off. And if you're going to, uh, you may even melt your aircraft, it, depending on how you run it. It's, this thing usually gets pretty warm. I mean, it's not that bad, but it gets warm. So that's just one thing you want to watch out for. And another thing you want to watch out for is um, when you're mounting this transmitter, it's very big, it's very bulky, so you're going to have to have an aircraft that can capable of handling this. If, 
If I were to demonstrate you the weight, I would say get about three or four AA batteries. Hold them in your hand. That's about how heavy this thing is. So make sure that your aircraft can handle that. So first of all, we're going to take our antenna. We'll thread it on here. We're going to use the omnidirectional three, uh, three leaf antenna, clover leaf. Uh, we're going to thread this on here right quick. There we go. And never ever turn on a transmitter like this without the antenna. Let me screw this. Give me a second. <laughs> so never ever 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 turn on your transmitter without the antenna installed, just like this. Because on FPV transmitters or any transmitters that have a power of above, you know, a few hundred milliwatts, there's a thing called reflected power. And that's usually when you have antennas. However, there's a problem. When this transmitter sends out the signal, it stops at this point, has nowhere else to go unless you have an antenna. If the antenna wasn't if the antenna wasn't here, it wouldn't radiate out. It would just simply go back into the radio and it would fry your transistors and components and it would in other words destroy your uh, transmitter. So never turn it on without the antenna because you risk damaging or destroying the transmitter even. And of course we have our camera. It's just three wires, plugs right into the deal, and it's powered by the unit itself. Here we have a nice little camera. Decent quality and as you can see just plugs in and then plugs into the bottom of our transmitter so let's take a look at the receiver we'll be using and then we'll give this puppy a go and see how the video see how uh, the quality is so all right okay so i wanted to show you guys the receiver this is the uh, tft color monitor as you can see it has a sun shield on there so you can carry this around out in the sun and still be able to see and of course we have our omnidirectional cloverleaf antenna. This is the receiver as it has four leaves on there. And if we take a look at the back of this receiver unit, what we'll notice is uh, vents here that look like speakers. These are not speakers, people. These are uh, these appear to be vents or something like that. As you can see, I can see right through. It's hollow. And uh, anyhow, I had a bit of trouble getting this set up with my uh, transmitter because, for one, the dip switches on here did not uh, coordinate with the frequency schematic that it came with and the other transmitter so it's a bit of getting the frequency correct but once you get that correct this uh, monitor is uh, basically self-running there's no power cords needed as you can hook up your uh, video in and out and have your power cord power going in to charge the unit it has an internal battery and to turn it on we flick this and you see the light comes on and we turn it over take a look it'll say no signal and I have it backwards because my FPV camera was set up backwards. So if I can find a way to rotate the screen, you just push this button until you get it correct. And there you have it. And there's your screen. So it'll say no signal because we don't have our FPV transmitter on at the moment. So the next thing we'll do is uh, leave this on and we'll go get our transmitter turned on. And I'll set you guys here watching that and I will uh, dictate into a microphone and I shall return with the transmitter. Okay, so while we get in our FPV going, I was just gonna show you how I'm going to talk to you while we get uh, the deal going. As you can see, I have an FM transmitter I can carry with me, it doesn't need to be plugged in. And I have a phone and I can talk to you guys through this military radio. All I have to do is select our frequency. Checking, one, two, three, checking, one, two, three. So we will test our FPV in just a second as I get the transmitter set up and we'll be ready to go. Okay, so I'm leaving the house right now. I'm going to step over the dog. There we go. And this FPV transmitter, that's absolutely normal for um, FPV to be glitchy when you're indoors. Usually that's normal. So as we step outside, I'm going to walk around the corner over here and see if I can walk out there. I hope you can still hear me. This transmitter can be funny sometimes. Okay, so now I'm outside walking around. I don't know if you can see the color quality on your screen because, uh, as you can see, I'm trying to show you the house, but the, the grass, I'm sure, doesn't come in or anything. Um, on the monitor itself, the TFT color monitor, the grass is green, the sky is blue, and the color quality is excellent. However, when I film the screen, you know, you can't really see it. Maybe you can see it momentarily, I'm not sure, but that's what I've noticed from test. Okay, I'm going to walk over here by the mine and see what we can see. And yeah, I was making an old mining station right over here. FPV can be glitchy around objects because keep in mind it is designed to be in the air and not to be used on land. But for FPV at 5.8 GHz, that's pretty good. 
So I'll just film around the backyard a little bit, and just to give you an idea of what the, what the quality is like. Okay, I'm going to head back to the house now. I'm going to see if I can walk that direction and uh, hold this at the same time. Alright, so there you can see the grass, and I try to get the trees as I walk back. So. And I'll review the footage when I get back, and hopefully my voice come in across the radio. If not, I'll have to edit that out. But, alright, well, I'll open the door. Hang on. Okay, so I'm back inside now, and I'll be walking back to my room. Okay, guys, well, I think that pretty much sums up the video, and uh, I just wanted to thank you for watching, and uh, this is High Voltage Mayhem, and if you wish to see more things like this, FPV, transmitters, electronics, uh, let me know down in the comments below what you think I should do next. And if you have any questions about FPV I could answer, I'd be glad to talk to you, so uh, thank you for uh, watching, and like, comment, subscribe, do whatever it is people do on YouTube, and uh, I'll see you later.